Good evening. Welcome to our Thursday night service of Pastor Dave Schreffler, Pastor at Trinity Lemoyne. We have our uh, a small group of uh, worshipers with us. We're hoping that you are joining us as well. Uh, a couple of announcements. Uh, people that we are praying for. Well, the ice cream social went well. Some people, we got uh, 20, 25 people come by for ice cream on Sunday night, so that was great. Um, we are going to be praying for Carol Cawthorn and her family. Uh, Carol believes her son and daughter have COVID-19, uh, the one who lives close by, and uh, so she's isolating herself, and so we want to pray for Carol. Um, uh, Jack McGeehan passed away, so we're praying for the family of Jack McGeehan. Uh, that one you might have to put on the prayer list, uh, Dennis, the family of Jack McGeehan. If I may, uh, so we're praying for Jack McGeehan, or the family of Jack McGeehan. Shirley Zimmerman is on there. Shirley's not been feeling well, and I am just feel we need to pray for Shirley. Karen Moeller is in Harrisburg Hospital with COVID-19 and is on a respirator, so we're praying for Karen. Uh, we're also praying for all of the residents at Fry Village. Um, there are a number of cases of COVID-19 at Fry Village. We're praying for Shona Trenhauser, who works there, all of the people. I mean, there's, there's a lot of people, it's, it's, it's rebounding in some places, and so it's a, it's a real concern. Uh, we're not over the, we're not over the, the top. You know, I think we're going to start backpedaling a little bit, and then we're going to take off again. But the bulletin was sent to you, um, so it's a little different, but we are having communion. So things are going to be a little loosey tonight. Uh, this Thursday night group usually asks questions uh, about my sermon and, and um, give me a hard time in, in many and various ways. So um, they... Uh, we're just so glad that this Thursday night group I know is glad to be back together again um, to be able to worship. And so we'll begin with the call to worship. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was, who is to come, the Almighty. Blessing and honor and glory and might be unto the Lamb. Worthy is Christ, who has ransomed us by his blood from every tribe and tongue and nation made his people a kingdom and priests to our God. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, eternal Lord, we praise you for your love and ask for your continuing favor. Look upon our human need and touch us with your healing hand. Help us to live in peace and prosper us in our honest pursuits. Sustain any who suffer because of their faith, and be the physician of the sick and the mighty defense of the distraught. Uphold your church in every place, and give us the will to give of ourselves for the building of your kingdom. Pour upon us a new measure of your spirit, that we may rise above our apathy, so as to assume greater responsibility for the service of others. Give us, O God, comfort and consolation the zest of life and the courage of faith until that day when in mercy you call us to be with you forever. Please join me. Through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, your Son, our, our Lord. Lord. Amen. And let us pray. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts that overflowing with joy we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. So Brian is going to read the first lesson. I'm going to see if I can get Brian on here. The first reading is from the book of Exodus, chapter 19, verses 2 through 8. The Israelites had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, 
and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, Everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sybil is going to read our next lesson. Second reading is from Romans 5, verses 1 to 8. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace of which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us, in that while we were still were sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you all. Oh, boy. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter, verse 35 to the tenth chapter verses 8 and 9 to 23. Glory Glory to you, Lord. Lord. <laughs> Jesus went about all the cities and the villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, curing every disease and every sickness. When the crowds, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to this disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Can Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts, no bag for your journey or two tunics or sandals or a staff, for laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues. And you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. 
Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Brian, will you turn that air conditioner back on? Uh, Christy's gonna. Okay. <laughs> I need a drink. So, we we have one of the commissionings Jesus commissioning his disciples. They're called apostles, but really, they're disciples. Uh, calling them by his side, he gives them authority to cast out demons, to cure diseases, and they are told to proclaim the good news. Who were these 12? We have conflicting lists in the Synoptic Gospels, but here in Matthew we have Simon Peter, Simon also known as Peter, his brother Andrew, we have James, son of Zebedee, his brother John, also a son of Zebedee, Philip, Bartholomew, Thaddeus, or Thomas the twin, Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot. Some of these names we know well, right? Some are not so familiar. Uh, some we don't hear about them except for they were one of the 12 disciples. But I'm always um, Boyd, Boyd, B-O-U-Y-E-D, Boyd. I'm always lifted by the names of these disciples because most are just regular people with whom Jesus called and connected with despite their baggage or their lack of pedigree. Right? Let, let's go through the list, but we're going to go in reverse order. We'll get the last done, or the worst done first, right? The worst shall be first. Judas Iscariot, right? The one who, um, uh, of course, there are two Judases named in differing accounts of the 12 disciples because they'll list the Judas and it'll say in front of these, not Iscariot. So depending on, uh, but in Matthew, it's Judas Iscariot. This is the one who betrayed Jesus. He's notorious. He, we're told at one point he was the treasurer and he would steal money from the treasury, right, from the other disciples. So he's, he's a bit of a notorious figure. Uh, of course, if you read the gospel according to Judas Iscariot, which is a Gnostic gospel, um, you get the sense that Jesus and Judas were close friends and Judas did this handing him over as a favor to Jesus. So we have, again, conflict, you know, even how Judas's life ends, there are conflicting stories of either, either he falls and his guts spill out or he hangs himself or he leaves sobbing, right? So, but, but we have Judas Iscariot. Judas is, let's call him the double agent. Right? The double agent. Do you understand what I'm... Right? For both sides. All right. All right. Simon the Cananean. We're told he was a zealot. We don't, we're not told here, but what we know about Simon the Cananean is he was a zealot. Uh, that was, the, you know, the zealots were an extremely radical political party. They would stop at nothing to remove the Roman occupation, to destroy the Romans the Roman occupation. Um, so uh, Simon is kind of like your cousin who's into conspiracies and possibly is a prepper. You know what a prepper is? Someone who's hoarding goods, oh, expecting okay. the final days, right? Right, They're, okay. Gotcha. So they can live underground when the nuclear bombs go off and only the cockroaches uh, live through the fire. Thaddeus. We don't have a lot of information about Thaddeus. Some traditions say he was a shepherd, which would have made him one of the more despised occupations 
in the time of Jesus, right? Shepherds were considered shifty and they would graze their sheep on property that wasn't theirs, right? Uh, so Thaddeus is your cousin who is rumored to work for the mob, okay? That's, that's who Thaddeus is. James, son of Alphaeus. Uh, again, we don't have a lot of identifying information. He's, he is really a veritable unknown. And yet Jesus selected him alongside Simon and, and, and you know, Peter and Andrew, James and John. He picked James, son of Alphaeus, who is a real mystery to the historians, right? So Judas is your cousin you didn't know about until one day he shows up at a party. You with me so far? All right. You guys are way too quiet for Thursday night. Uh, there's stunned silence. I just want you to know that. Matthew, the tax collector. The, his story is familiar to us, right? As a tax collector, he was looked upon as being in cahoots with the Roman government, right? He was at, he was an Israelite, but he was charged to he was he had a job of charging taxes to the other Israelites. And often he would have to charge more than what was expected so that at least he could get paid, right? So there were some tax collectors that charged more just to increase their own wealth, but his position was unpopular with both Jews and Romans. And yet Jesus saw something in Matthew, the tax collector. So Matthew is, let's say, He's the one that will muck your horse's stall, but he'll charge you an arm and a leg, right? He's the one that'll come help you dig out your, your sewage tank when you have, right? But he's gonna expect a lot in return, right? All right. Thomas, Thomas is the twin. My man. This is Dennis's favorite person, the doubter, right? Uh, he is uh, the one who doubts, he wanted to see Jesus, just like the other disciples got to see Jesus uh, on the day of the resurrection. We also have to remember that Thomas was the one in the story of the raising of Lazarus when Jesus delays. He finally says, okay, we're going to go see Lazarus. And Thomas is the one who says, let's go so we can die with him. So, so we see two sides of Thomas, right? So Thomas is your cousin who doesn't believe anything, right? Thomas is the one who says, I don't believe it. Right. Bartholomew, another veritable unknown disciple. He does appear at the Ascension. So there's a list of disciples or apostles given at the Ascension in the book of Acts, chapter 2 or chapter 1. Um, but again, Jesus knew more about Bartholomew than we will ever know. So here's another lost cousin that shows up at a picnic one day. All right. James and his brother John, they are famous because Jesus calls them sons of thunder, right? He first calls Peter and then Andrew and then he calls James and John. They, they come from probably a fairly well-to-do family. They have a fishing business, right? They're there with their father. Um, they drop everything to follow Jesus, you know, possibly insulting their father in the process of doing that. Um, but there's something about their personality that Jesus calls them sons of thunder. Or he calls them the loud boys, right? So um, James and John are like your loud and crazy uncles, right? You, we, we all had loud and crazy uncles, right? And then finally we have Peter and Andrew. Again, brothers, also fishermen. Andrew was originally... Uh, a follower of John the Baptist, but he's one that leaves, instead of being a follower of John the Baptist, he goes to be a follower of Jesus. Um, so Andrew's kind of like the third wheel. You know, when you want to go out with somebody, there's always the third wheel with you, right? Uh, and then Peter, Peter is a conflicted personality, right? Peter wears his emotions on his sleeves. He often speaks before he thinks. He's impetuous. The Catholic Church picks Peter as the first uh, pope that's uh, who they trace their popes back to because Jesus says, I will call you Petros or I will call you Peter and on this rock I will build my church, right? 
That's the Catholic Church claim to Peter. Peter also, even though he's a bit impetuous and he says things when he shouldn't speak, he speaks when he shouldn't speak, he, on the day of Pentecost, he preaches and 3,000 people are baptized. I can't get one person to stay after a church sermon and say, hey, nice sermon, right? Peter gets 3,000 to be baptized after a sermon. So these are the disciples. Um, on the day that Jesus called them to be his disciples, they were not famous. One or two might have been infamous at that point in time, like Matthew uh, and the zealot. Um, Simon, I think, the canon ant, right? He was the zealot. But they were a ragtag, diverse group of regular Joes, all from different experiences. Um, some were brothers, right? Some might have been hometown friends. Some came from the city. Some were shepherds that came from r r very rural parts. One thing they have in common was their willingness to remain open and to follow that calling from Jesus. So, having heard a bit of their description, which disciple do you feel you are most like? Right? The quiet, veritable unknown, like James, son of Alphaeus, or Bartholomew. Maybe you feel like an outsider a lot of times. Uh, or you want to be part, you know, you want to you want to be more of a part, a greater part within the, the church or within a group, right? Perhaps you bring in a lot of baggage, you know, with your life experiences like Matthew or Simon the Cananean. You, you think you have too much history that you believe God or others might hold against you. Do you connect with any of the disciples? So Dennis connects. Is that a rhetorical question? No, this no, is a question a you, you can. Question. Th this is a real life question. Say, uh, hold on, hold on. And Simon the Zealot. Hold on. Say that again, Dennis. Simon, Simon the Zealot and Thomas. And why is that, Dennis? Because Thomas, because I want to put my hand in the, in the womb to know that it's really real. Right. It's really happened. Right. And, my idea of Simon the Zealot was always he was one of the zealots that were the uh, guerrilla kind of right. group that were fighting against right. the Romans. So right, right. I would want to take action and mm -hmm. get the scum removed from our earth, right. from, from our neck. Okay. Anyone else want to share? I can relate to uh, Simon a lot. Can you speak up, Ryan? I can relate to Simon a lot as well. Um, you know, so many mistakes that I've made in my past, but you know, I, I spend each and every day uh, praying to, uh, to become a better uh, disciple. Uh, try and put myself in a position to, to teach God's words. Okay. All right. Um, Anyone else? Your, uh, Christy says she's the partier, so she would be. Wow. Oh, with James and John, sons of thunder. There's okay. Christy. We 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 can we can see that, Christy. We love you. We love you. But I'm I'm always glad that Jesus' disciples are, you know, that they they were complex, they were unique. They were flawed people. And yet these are the big 12. These are the original disciples called to share this, this new expression of God's love. This, this you know, they're given a, a new authority. You know, they were to proclaim this gospel of love through Jesus Christ. And as Jesus looked at his world and said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. These lost sheep need a shepherd. I kind of look at our world right now, and I feel kind of the same way. 
Did you read about the election fiasco down in Georgia? Yes. This week where they they had poll workers who were afraid to show up. So some people went in to vote and it took them seven minutes and some people it took them five hours because they didn't have enough people, they didn't have enough um, workers, they didn't have enough supplies, right? Right, you know, standing in the heat. It was a microcosm, I think, of the way people feel right now in our, in our world. A little lost, a little confused, and very afraid. I've said recently, you know, over the last couple of weeks in my sermons, I've lamented a bit about the, the, um, the increasing secularness, you know, the fact that religion has been eroded away from people's lives year after year in the, this country in particular. Um, and now with this pandemic, I think people are trying to find some kind of base to stand on. And perhaps a little bit of facing your own mortality, right? Recognizing the fragility of life will put more people in the mood to seek some security and faith. Or will look for a shepherd they can trust. Perhaps this pandemic may help people in the church realize right now that we are surrounded by lost sheep. The plentiful harvest is just in our backyards. Now is the time we should be sharing the gospel. And yeah, I know it's hard because we're still sort of sheltered. Well, we're not sheltering in place anymore, but I, you know, we're, we're just getting comfortable again with you know, being around people. And maybe you are thinking, well, I don't know what to say. Remember the, the gospel teaching, Jesus will, the Spirit will give you the words to say. And take it from me, you know, my 15th anniversary of my ordination was this week. Yesterday, in fact. 15th anniversary, thank you. Uh, I don't say that for the kudos. I say that because I'm just going to tell you, when God calls you, he keeps pestering you until you say, all right, Lord, I get it. Now's the time that we should take advantage of sharing the good news because there are people out there that need to hear some good news. So what do you hear in this text? What, what comments do you guys have? One of your favorites, Brian. Verse 10 here where it says, uh, Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. I think that's amazing and powerful. And I, I'm interested in how that's possible. You know, uh, yeah, there are, you know, that's a whole other sermon for another time. But, and I've, I've preached on this text about the fact that, um, you know, us being able to do the things that Jesus does or to do even greater things, um, you know, choosing to give of your time rather than spending it on yourself or giving of your money rather than spending it on yourself. Uh, and doing something when it's not expected, but you're doing it for your faith. Dare I say, Jesus would look at that and say, you're doing something greater than I could do. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, it doesn't have to be healing the sick and raising the dead. It can be as much as being with somebody as they're dying and comforting them. Um, you know, there, there's some very simple things we can do that don't have to be considered miraculous, yet Jesus will say when we cross over, you know, well done, good and trustworthy servant. That verse makes me very hopeful. 
Yeah, yeah. And we can heal each other. Well, and it doesn't have to be just the physical healing, the, uh, the psychological healing. There's a lot of people that need healing right now. Absolutely. You know, uh, their fear of these pandemic, not just the pandemic, but the social unrest, you know. You know, the fact that we, we are looking, you know, the world's changing right in front of our eyes if we don't realize it. And, um, you know, seeking more justice for our black and brown brothers and sisters, you know, doing things um, that, that takes our focus away from ourselves and really considering the others around us. You know, I think that's a time Jesus says you're doing, you know, greater things. So, that's my uh, opinion. One of the things that strikes me all the time, too, is these uh, 12 guys that you picked were just, they were like every man. Yep. I mean, you did a, a good job of sketching in a little bit of personality color for each one of them, but in truth, some of these guys were, were only mentioned once or twice in the Bible, so we really don't know yep. that much about them. So, right. I mean, they could be just, they could have died in people off the street that he picked. So it's it's not like you have to have special superpowers to be a, a an apostle. Exactly. Because these were just guys from everyday life, you know. He didn't so. he didn't just pick, you know, Joe the rabbi in this synagogue and and John the religious leader in this and and the mayor of, you know, Bethlehem and the right? Mm -hmm. He picked just normal people and I'm sure none yeah. of them thought that they could end up doing what they all did either you know? yeah absolutely absolutely that's why you know i said at the very beginning it, it's what gives me hope brian's talking about hope it gives me hope because you know a schmuck like like me you know i feel like you know well there's some hope for me too because you know you don't have to be rich and powerful that's not who jesus called right right he called the flawed he called the broken. He called, you know, uh, the hated. Matthew, the tax collector, he would have been hated <laughs> by the Israelites, right? Um, you know, if you live next to a zealot, I'm not so sure he was your best neighbor, right? I mean, yeah. you've you've known some people in your life that are that are zealots and for something, right? They're a zealot for you know maybe a particular football team and it just drives you crazy because that's all they talk about that's all they're focused on right um zealots can be tough people to to be around and there's there's one you know the shepherds right again you know not considered the the the, the best job not um not the most respected position in first century palestine um, like democrats and republicans you know trying to listen to one of them you know, yeah. <laughs> like, and you don't, you're not going to agree with them. Just, you just got to be like, I just can't hear anymore. Yeah. 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 What about this um, microchip thing that we keep hearing about? Is that like, you know, it scares me that that's in the Bible, you know, that we're going to get numbers. No, we're not going to get microchipped. I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't know where you're getting this information, but. I, yeah, well, I, I've never heard anything about they, 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 they can't even get you to, uh, uh, a vaccine in in 18 months they're not going to stick a microchip in your back like your cat and your dog so they can figure out who you are i'm sorry it's not gonna happen i've heard rumors of this since i was a child since i was a baby people Thank talking you. about this microchip that's going to be it, installed in it, it, yeah. it, it, it is i'm i'm gonna get a data port put right in my <laughs> neck right i could just stick a, a usb uh a flash drive in there and can download all my all my go. worries and then I can yeah, give it to, awesome. give it to somebody. Yeah. Well, do you believe yeah. that people are shot with computer chips? No. No. I, 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 <laughs> we we need to get the prayers. I, I think. Uh, Thomas, I don't believe any of that stuff. Uh, one last thing before you go, Pastor, and this is I know this is another subject for another whole time. But you referred to the Book of Judas. Some people think. The Gospel of Judas Iscariot, yes. That we needed to have Judas to fulfill Jesus' legacy. Yeah. I mean, some people say, some people say that Judas was required in this, and that he was actually, uh, someone would say, the the truest of the disciples because he 
he did what had to be done, even though he didn't want to, and Jesus was their best friend and, the, and their, their savior. But Yeah, I, I mean, it, it's Jesus almost like... Do, somebody had to do this, right. this deed. You know? And, and which, which pushes the story further? You know, I think if they said, well, his friend Judas betrayed him, right? It just doesn't sound as powerful as one of his disciples right. turns on him, right? Uh, for money, and uh, um, but you're absolutely right, you know, and, and I think it's described that Jesus goes to Judas and says, hey, I need you to do this for me. So it, it's, a, it, it's, a, it's a good book. It's a, I, I like the gospel of Judas Iscariot. It's kind of like the gospel of Mary Magdalene. They're, they're good books. They're non-canonical. They're uh, not pseudepigraphal. They aren't in the Septuagint. What does that mean? <laughs> yeah, they're part of the Nag Hammadi uh, scrolls that they found, the, the Dead Sea Scrolls. They okay. found these. It, uh, there was a, a group of, of, of um, Essenes who uh, lived in the desert, sort of separated themselves, uh, and they found this whole cache of their scrolls, their writings, and they're called Gnostic writings. And this is uh, the Gospel of Judas Iscariot, the Gospel of... Um, um, Mary, so, uh, Magdalene. Mary, Mary Magdalene, yeah, there were uh, the Gospel of Thomas. These yeah. are all part of these Gnostic writings that they were not considered to be in the canon because um, they it just it just portrays a different relationship with Jesus than what the the group of people who put together the Bible wanted, you know, within that canon. Um, and then they were hid for thousands of years because the Essenes were afraid they were heavily persecuted and so they buried them in a cave and a Bedouin shepherd looking for firewood finds all of these things in these clay jars in a cave and it comes to light that, and some of them were burned for firewood so we don't even know there are things that might have been in there the Bedouin I'm sorry the Nag Hammadi yeah, it's okay. just a part of the of the area the area where they found these scrolls. So, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to make myself look smarter than what I am. So okay, let's get to the. I'm going to bring this back to me. Sorry, people at home. Um, let's. I am going to say the Apostles' Creed. You say it to yourself or in your heart. All right. Do not say it along with me. Just read it and follow along and say it in your heart. You with me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Dennis is going to read the prayers for us. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Christian. Holy One, you bring us together and call us your own. Bless theologians, teachers, and preachers who help us grow in faith. Guide your church that we might be a holy people. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Holy One, the whole earth is yours. Where there is fire, bring cool air and new growth. Where there is flooding, bring abatement. Where there is drought, bring rain. Inspire us to care for what you have provided. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, we have created divisions you will not own. In places of conflict, raise up leaders who work to develop lasting peace and reconciliation. Encourage organizations and individuals who care for all forced to leave their homes. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy is great. Holy One, you care for those who are harassed and helpless. 
protect and defend those who are abused. Heal those who are sick. Feed all who are hungry. Empower those whose voices go unheard. And help us respond to the pressing needs of our neighbors, especially our TLC families and especially those involved in health care, essential workers, and shut-ins. Laura Doyle, Betty Benner, Sam Leach, Liz Roach, Clara Kohler, Jim Carl, Kristen Stark, Don and Mary Ann Howe, Chris Lardy, all emergency responders and hospital personnel, COVID-19 families, Nancy Schreffler, Keith Quigley, the Jack McGeehan family, Kim and Chris Richardson, Victoria Rose, John Haycock, Linda Doty, Carol Cawther and family, Shauna Trenhauser, the residents of Tri Village and Messiah Village, Karen Moeller, Shirley Zimmerman, and our TLC COVID-19 task force. Hear us, O oh God. Your Be mercy is history. great. Holy One, you provide a plentiful harvest of gifts and resources. Prepare us to labor and gather the fruits of this congregation, that we might discover new ways of living. Minister to us in our work, that we do not lose heart. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Holy One, you bring all people to yourself. We give thanks for the holy people who have gone before us. Sustain us in your mission until the day you bear us up to join the saints in the heart. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers of God and those too deep for words through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Don't you dare go anywhere. <laughs> wave at each other. Peace wave, everybody. wave. No hugging. No hugging. Sorry. No hugging. So now I need to, let's see here. Almighty God, your saints were often poor, yet you made them rich in works of faith. Help us bring you gifts that reflect our gratitude for the heavenly treasures you have given us. Amen. Amen. Nope. I'll go this way. See if that helps. Nope. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering who preached good news to the poor and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks. He gave it to, for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. I'm going to ask that you say with me the Lord's Prayer just quietly in your heart. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to come around with communion.
I want you to take a cup and a wafer. Just be very careful. Do not consume anything yet. So we're going to do it together. We're going to be Presbyterians for a day or for a month. Do not consume yet, Dennis. You can tell you are trying. He was most of the way in his mouth. All right, let's take our bread. The body of Christ given for you. Go ahead. Amen. Take our cup. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. O giver of every good gift, you have fed us at your table that we might abide in your love and draw our life from you. Send us forth into the world to bear the fruits of the Spirit, that all creation might be filled with the life of the risen Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. Go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. The blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and forever. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. Thank, you. Thank you very much. We're going to say goodbye to our friends on uh, Facebook. Thanks Bye, for joining us, and uh, join us on Sunday morning.